looks like it's ready time to go to the match. So let's see what happens. Match number one will be number 19 in the world, Andrew Cuneo, and that'll probably go up a couple of spots once the, the new rankings <laughs> come out this week, updated in the light of the last Grand Prix. Playing against yeah. Jerry Thompson, so blue white control versus Jess guy, kind of mid range, good stuff deck. Yeah, I imagine that like m oh, people who did well at the Grand Prix, their rankings are going to move up, like maybe from 79th to like 73rd <laughs> or something. To, so, to be fair, you were you were actually 80th going in because it was. Oh, a I, in I did I did lose one, but I imagine at, when you're talking about that high of numbers, you move a lot when you get four points. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, that top eight probably does move you up in the rankings quite a bit. I might crack the top 65. I mean, that's been one of my goals since the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> so another thing that that's a pretty big advantage here for jerry first of all he's on the play so mana strider comes out before dissolve valor stance is very bad against jerry's deck it it does not kill very much mm. which isn't like an interaction i think jerry thought of when he built his deck necessarily but it just comes up because andrew has one in his hand interesting looks like uh so far grandmaster is the card jerry is debating with his temple yeah I, I like putting it on the bottom, which is, I think, what Jerry is going yeah, to do. Just Because the problem is, if you put it on top, are you then going to play a turn two Soulfire Grandmaster and be unable to play a Mana Strider? Like, if you knew Flooded Strand was the top card of your deck, I think you would put it on top. Mm -hmm. But given that you didn't have an untapped third land, you might as well just put it on the bottom, then play your Scry Land turn two, and go, you know, go for something a little better than a two drop if you can't play it on turn two. Well, yeah, Jerry is set up for the turn three Mantis Rider. Yeah. And Andrew has two counter spells that he can't cast, one that he can cast but can't target Manus Rider, a removal spell that can't target Manus Rider, and an Elspeth, wow. which actually doesn't stop Manus Rider either. So J I think Jerry's Manus Riders and, you know, good support spells are going to be really, really good in this matchup. Manus Rider does seem quite good against... Is it? Is it just good against Andrew's deck in general, or is it this draw that happens to be particularly vulnerable to it? I, I think it's great against Andrew's deck in general. It's Manus Rider was always the card that you really wanted against control decks, and... Mm -hmm. It just does what you need. It's it's hasty damage. It doesn't die to like Valorous Stance or Last Breath. It does die to Bio Blight, which is annoying if you think you're going to play against Esper. But, you know, Jerry probably knew that Andrew played yeah. Blue White Control in Toronto. This is the he exact does same not deck. Like Esper. Andrew's been very, very vociferous and just not liking the Esper Dragon build. He thinks this Blue White deck is just better. It does get to dissolve the second Mantis Rider. So. Yeah. And. You know, having an Ojutai in hand is pretty good. That that was actually a pretty good draw, if, especially since Andrew's more likely to draw lands now that he's using Narset, because, well, if he misses, then it's probably a land. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> There aren't very many other options. Well, I guess he missed, so we know it was, it's either a land or the other Ojutai. Yeah, so the other Ojutai would be a disaster. That That <laughs> is accurate. That's like the worst card in, in his deck. At this point, but and Jerry is ignoring Narset in favor of just attacking Andrew. Kind of interesting. I like that. It, Jerry's presumably going to get to attack Narset when when he wants wow. to. And hostilities. Ooh, and hostilities. That's pretty good. Actually, Andrew looks like he's kind of crushing right now. Yeah, he but just sweeps the board, right? Jerry does have a decent amount of burn in his deck. Like, Jerry does get to actually smash for five here, put Andrew to five. I guess he could he could be wary of Narset at some point, but it's got at least another turn before, I mean, another turn to go to nine, then a turn after that to ultimate. So I could definitely see uh, Jerry just wanted to put Andrew at a low enough life total that Jerry can dig through time into burn spells, which has kind of been the Just Guy deck strategy since the very beginning. Well, here's Mantis Rider while Andrew's tapped out from the end hostilities. Another thing worth happens. noting is is in, Andrew could have oh he split them he actually uh, he chipped away two versus two damage to Narset and three damage to Andrew playing around a second end hostilities I imagine Andrew could have also rebounded end hostilities last turn he could have chosen to minus ah. Narset which is I think a very reasonable play well didn't he so, draw it off the Narset oh he plussed into Narset yeah you're right he plussed into it so that was not <laughs> had Jerry attacked Andrew last turn Jerry would have won this turn by drawing lightning strike since. Ojutai blocks the Mana Strider, the Morph takes Andrew to, now to three, but because Narset got attacked, Jerry is going to be a little bit short. He can still attack and then use just Valor Stance to keep Mana Strider alive. That's not a super efficient turn, but then you get to also cast Lightning Strike, maybe at end of turn. And then set up a Dig Through Time because you now have five cards in your graveyard. You could also play a Morph Stratus Dancer, but that, clearly that's much more appealing once you have five mana instead of four. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. You could also play a face up Stratus Dancer, though that doesn't seem super exciting. It does... It actually... I mean, in hostility is going to be a lot worse with an Ojutai in play, so 
Jerry could actually attack with both, stance to keep Mana Strider alive, put Andrew to five, then just cast a face-up Stratus Dancer and pass with three creatures in play. Elspeth doesn't do a ton. It also threatens Lethal Lightning Strike next turn. It just forces Andrew to tap out. I kind of like that. I think that's one of the ways you can also use, you know, I think you want to play two two-drops this turn just because you have all these dig-through times. So the more, more cards you can get in your graveyard, the kind of the more, you know, quickly you can get dig-through time online, which is another really good way to win this game. We are on Jerry's main phase, so he's going through his options right now. Well, one of the drawbacks to the line I suggested of Valor Stance plus Stratus Dancer is that uh, it does lose pretty hard to end hostilities. Jerry could also just play Stratus Dancer and pass and leave Valor Stance up. That plays around end hostilities much better and does the same amount of damage next turn just about, so that actually seems very reasonable too. Andrew draws a try land. Narset hits Nullify. Nullify. Now what does Andrew do? His options are basically tap out for Elspeth or pass. He can pass, but it's kind of awkward because he's got just Dissolve up. But right. Elspeth doesn't also really stop a whole lot. So leaving up Dissolve is fairly close. I would expect, I mean, Andrew has to Dissolve this, otherwise yeah. he, he does just die. Well, you know, Disdainful Stroke and Nullify do cover a lot of bases here. Mm -hmm. There aren't very many things that get through it. A second Lightning Strike is, is probably Jerry's best draw here. Hmm. Ojitai's Command. Ojitai's Command. Not the card you really want in this matchup. Uh -uh. But yeah, Jerry's going smashing in. He's got Valorous Stance to save whatever gets blocked by Dragon Lord Ojitai. He could also not use the Valor Stance if he wanted to use Dig Through Time. He unfortunately can't use both here. Yeah, he's got yeah. one short of being able to... Yeah, for this also lets him keep up Ojutai's command. He let the Mantis Rider die. Yeah. This puts the pressure on Andrew, because it doesn't let Andrew use another counterspell this turn, which Jerry could be worried about. Uh, it looks like Narset just missed there. Yep. It also means that Andrew does have to do something here, otherwise he presumably gets attacked down to one, which isn't lethal, but Jerry is planning on playing a spell end of turn to pressure him further. This Disdainful Stroke is about to get a little bit better, though, because whatever Jerry plays end of turn is going to get Disdainful Stroked. Well, Jerry's going to go through a dig through time. Makes a lot of sense. He's going to have to delve four cards down to one in the yard. That Flood of Strand is not looking particularly valuable here. <laughs> <laughs> but Jerry may have to actually just attack Narset here. Narset is, is about to flip. So I don't hate attacking both on Narset, and then it leaves you enough mana to cast Dig Through Time after one dies, and then hope to find a, a burn spell off that. I don't think you can let Narset go ultimate, though. I also don't think you want to cast Valorous Dance here. You're just talking about some pretty low-value creatures. You'd much rather get Dig Through Time off. Maybe At that point, I would be a little bit more likely to cast it on upkeep. Does he have yeah. Dig Through? Isn't he one short? Well, one creature is going to die. Oh, the creature dies. Let the creature die, and then you can dig. Looks like Jerry's going to go for Valorous Dance instead. So... What Jerry's going to do here is actually just hope to draw a land. I think he's, yeah, just putting Andrew down to one. Yep. And now he's got an Ash Cloud Phoenix that if he draws a six land, he just wins the game off of. So he's all in on this plan. This actually seems like a very reasonable plan as well. Yeah, this, this might be better. It's risky in the sense that if this Phoenix gets removed, you cannot win the game because uh, unless you draw like, Mantis, like yeah, I guess just one Mana Strider actually would do it. But... A six land does 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 win you the game right away. All right, Andrew Cunio down to one. Jerry Thompson with a face down Ash Cloud. It technically does also make it so Andrew doesn't get to look at his top card with Narset because presumably Narset's going <laughs> ultimate. Yeah, there we go. There is the Narset emblem. Your opponents cannot cast non-creature spells. And then Ojitai still can't attack into a, a, a Stratus Dancer here. No, Elspeth is really just not the best against a uh, Jess guy. Uh oh, uh -oh. <laughs> it's the land, but it comes to play tapped. Next turn. 
Andrew's got nothing, right? He's got a he can he attack, to attack with with Ojitai? Yeah, but Jerry's just gonna block now. So he is. Wow. Jerry went <laughs> all in on flipping this Ash Cloud at six mana. Got Andrew to one. Andrew now has complete control of the game, including a Narset emblem. Yeah, this and is awesome. <laughs> it's just not good enough. Last breath would have been a pretty amazing draw there. That would have uh -huh. been game. It's last breath your own token. Wow, Ash Cloud Phoenix for the last point of damage. And yep. Jerry Thompson wins game one. Crazy. Yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. You know, the thing is, I think game one, Jerry's a little bit ahead, and I think that Jerry's going to get better post sideboard. We can take a look at their lists, but uh, sure. in general, decks like Blue White don't get better after sideboard. So, looks like Jerry's got a decent amount of stuff. He's got Storm Breath Dragon, Disdainful Stroke, Mastery of the Unseen, maybe an Elspeth. Glare's maybe. solid, kills an Elspeth, right? Yeah, Glare's okay. The thing is, you don't care about Elspeth all that much. Kills so. Narset, too. But yeah, he it does care. kill Narset. Jerry has like what roast two valor stances. Ojitai's command is also not, all, not not great. Right. It definitely seems like he has some bad cards to take out, and yeah. he's got at least you know better cards available. And I, and you almost never feel bad about trimming burn spells just because yeah I mean they finished the job but they're not they're not high value cards really. Agreed. Andrew have anything exciting in his board? What he's really looking for is answers to Mantis Rider. He's got Encase and Ice, which does do it. Glare of Heresy, which does do it. Surge of Righteousness. <laughs> yeah, Surge of Righteousness I would expect to come in. I mean, it's funny that Mantis Rider gets hit by all these different hate cards, <laughs> mostly the red ones here. But uh, And then this is why the, the Jeskai aggro deck that Jerry's playing against or the mid-range deck that Jerry's playing is, is good in this matchup. It's that you've got a card like Negate, which is good against Dig Through Time and is good against Jerry's counter spells. But do you really want to side in Negate against someone who's going to play like Soulfire Grandmaster and the Goblin Rabble Master. <laughs> it, it's just kind of awkward, you know? Fair. <laughs> There's the surge, the surge of righteousness. <laughs> Couple updates, by the way. Uh, Tom Ross and Josh Edder Layton have split their first two games. They're already on the game three. That was fast. Yeah, and uh, Brad Nelson is up a game in his match as well. I, I guess Tom and Josh are playing like Jeskai Aggro against Band Heroic, so it's not too True surprising. True story, yeah. Those, that did match should not last a long time. <laughs> I tried to draft Josh's deck from last week in the top eight of the Grand Prix, uh, you know, <laughs> Corner for Striders and uh, uh, Team of Battle Rages, but ended up going into black instead. Yeah, face up Stratus Dancer. I think that's the play. Jerry's got a three drop. Andrew does not have very many two drop counter spells. He's got Nullify. That's about it. And look, Andrew's got a handful of negates in hand. They will be good this turn if Jerry casts the Hordling Outburst, though. Stratus Tantra chips away for two. Let's see what Jerry's planning on doing. He can either cast Hordling Outburst, but then he doesn't know if he has a fourth land. I think he's just going to play Monastery so he can set up an Ash Cloud Phoenix later. Also, this way, Jerry just spends a turn not walking into a Dissolve, which, yeah, has some value sometimes. Stratus Dancer. You know, I really like this card. I, I just love playing with Stratus Dancer. I've had it in the sideboard of a bunch of Esper decks. It's just it's just a sweet card. It's just a, a good value card that's like got you know some versatility because you can play it face up. I think it's a really just very cool card that is powerful enough to see some play, but not so powerful you're just going to run for. So Jerry's playing it pretty slow here. He's not tapping out for anything. He doesn't want to tap out, get countered, and have Andrew cast like Ojutai, which could have happened last turn. So now Jerry's going to play Hordling Outburst. Doesn't care if Andrew counters it, which he will, and then play a Battlefield Forge and have Disdainful Stroke up for whatever Andrew's next play is. Yeah, he could have played that Hordling Outburst as early as turn three, but was not interested in dropping his counter magic. Yeah, and Jerry's happy just smashing here. Also, if Jerry plays a face-down Stratus Dancer here, he's in such good shape. Andrew can't counter it, and now Jerry's got an uncounterable counter spell in play. If Andrew does anything, it just gets countered. Like, Stratus Dancer is just a, such a beating against the control decks. Man, I didn't have Andrew on going back to control after the bruise he showed up with the last couple of weeks. Hats off to Jerry for, I mean, essentially predicting predicting what Andrew was going to do, right? Yeah, Jerry played a deck that's, you know, very well tuned against this control deck. And look, Jerry's just got a bunch of castable spells and doesn't need to do anything. Andrew's got two Surge of Righteousness in hand, getting beaten down by a face-up and a face-down Stratus Dancer, which he just can't beat at this point. Like, Jerry can play Stoke with counter backup. 
He can also just do nothing. Andrew has to tap out for end hostilities, which he knows is going to get Stratus answered here. And there we go. <laughs> and yeah. that that alone just ends the game. Jerry cast three spells this game. <laughs> Crazy. Wow, Stratus Dancer, huh? Yeah, I mean, I just I, I really like that card. I think it's a really cool card. All right, Jerry Thompson moves on to the semifinals. Andrew, first round exit with the blue white control deck. Yeah, uh, he ran into a deck that, I mean, it's not like Jerry, again, no player so far has played decks that just can't beat certain archetypes. Like, they play decks that are better or worse. Like, right. you know, when, o when Owen played a four thought seizes in abs on aggro against Andrew's deck, well, yeah, he was playing a deck that because he, he thought Andrew was playing control, but he wasn't playing a deck that couldn't beat other decks. And yeah, Jerry played a deck that was great against control, but I still feel like Jerry's deck is fine just in the field at large. It's not like Jerry no, played a, a super no, metagame saying. deck. I was certainly giving him some credit for sort of accurately predicting which way Andrew was going to go and, and playing something that helped him out there. But yeah, it's not like he played an anti-Andrew deck. He's just like, oh, of the decks I could play, I'll choose the one that happens to have Stratus Dancers baked into it. You know, change, move a couple numbers. Uh, one other update, by the way. Uh, Jess Guy is apparently overpowered. Josh Utter Layton is victorious with his Jess Guy aggro deck. Bant Heroic is the loser. Tom Ross will not be taking Bant Heroic into the semifinals. So Josh is on the board now. He's got a, a you know a shot at doing better than a first round exit. I mean, rather he's already done better than that. He could actually win though. Right, that's his that's his first win, right? Mm -hmm. He had two first round exits. So now the, the all alone in last place, Brad Nelson. Clearly, guy doesn't know anything about standard, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Brad, you know, Brad went with a pretty tried and true deck at this point. So I think that uh, I think that he's got a, a better shot. It's not like he's automatically going to win. But he's he's got a, a you know a pretty good shot with Alves on aggro there. Oh, by the way, uh, Brad has now won. So Paul Chion and his Jess Guy Dragons deck, Jess Guy apparently not invincible. Uh, Paul loses to Brad Nelson, so it'll be Alves on aggro versus that uh, kind of Jess Guy mid range good stuff deck for Jerry in one semifinal. The other semifinal is going to be Josh utter Layton versus To Be Determined. Uh, we're actually going to set up now for the match between Brian Kibler and Ojutai. So, so worth noting, uh, every time Ojutai has shown up, Ojutai has lost in round one. <laughs> There's oh, been wow. three round one exits for o Dragon Lord Ojutai. So uh, Control has not had the best run so far. Paul's played it twice and lost round one, and then True. Andrew played it here and lost, so... No, that's a good point. Uh, interestingly, by the way, we did have eight different decks today. Like, if you're counting in terms of, like, nobody lined up today, and we're up to 20 different archetypes over the course of three weeks. So it's been I, yeah. eight different decks, then seven different decks, and then eight different decks, and then very little overlap across those either. So I guess out of a hypothetical 24 possible archetypes, we're all the way up at 20. I guess Avzan Agro has happened a couple of times, Mardu Dragons has happened a couple of times, and that's actually the second band heroic uh, in Tom Ross's hands. Uh, I, I would actually argue we have seven different decks today. I think Jerry and Josh are playing like basically the same deck. Like they're put, they're both put playing... Josh's list up on the board. It does not look the same to me. Josh looks way more aggressive to me than Jerry. So Josh basically cut a disdainful stroke and like another card for two Goblin Heel Cutters. No, and... but the Jeskai charms are not in Jerry's list. Yeah. So and then he, yeah, he, and then he had a Jeskai charm, but Wild so he's Wild. got. He's got a couple more burn spells and a couple less controlling cards, but I think that like the you know the Manus Rider Rabble Master burn spells dig through time plan is close enough that I think the decks play similarly, even though Jerry hedged I think a little more against control. So I, I think the archetypes like on an archetype level you'd play against these decks about the same way. But interesting, yeah. This to me, just got charm being able to just go to the face. This felt much more aggressive. Like Josh. I, I don't know. I, I obviously haven't seen the deck play out yet, but between jo between Goblin Heel Cutter and Jeskai Charm, it felt like it's, it's given, definitely given a more aggressive take. Up, go ahead. Like, yeah, it's definitely a more aggressive take. But like, if I had to say what archetype this was, I'd say they're both kind of like Jeskai mid range, just because like they're neither of them have like one drops. They have one two drop, or Josh has two two drops. So Josh, yeah, he's more on the aggressive side, but. I don't know. I, I feel like the decks, like, you would sideboard against them fairly similarly, so... May, Does Jerry may... have Seeker of the Way? No, we can take a look at Jerry's decks to see how, how different they are. I feel they... like they were... I mean, obviously, I was the guy who went through and, and assigned labels to yeah. these, and 
Yeah, there's there, no Seekers in there. There's Ash Cloud Phoenixes instead. I well, There's Stratus Dancers, I think, as like the two drop kind of ish slot. But sure. They, they have a similar amount of creatures, and Jerry has like Ojatai's Command, Disdainful Stroke, Roast, and, and I, I guess one less Valorous Dance and one more Disdainful Stroke. So. I don't know. I mean, th there are clearly card differences here. These decks are going to play out a little differently, but I think like they're a similar archetype. Not that it really matters too much. No, I mean it, it's an interesting conversation. Like, yeah, do you, definitely. Do you think the Obzon decks are all sort of merged together? We should just be talking about the Obzon archetype, this dominating standard right now. Like, if we're going to draw a line between Obzon aggro, Obzon mid range, and Obzon control, these actually differ by more cards than those decks do. So Kibler did load his standard deck, right? <laughs> I see a, a sword-wise centaur. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get.